Today, today, so in this clip, we're going to be going over an example on how to graph uh, piecewise defined functions. So let's go ahead and write down the uh, problem that we're going to be doing. So instructions are as follows: graph, graph the function, graph uh, the function. Uh, the function we're going to be graphing today is a piecewise defined function f of x equals uh, strictly bracket 2 over 3x plus 1 if x is less than or equal to 1 and negative x plus 2 if x is greater than uh, 1. Okay? So let's go ahead and uh, graph this function. So before we start what I like to do is I like to label my functions function 1 and function 2. So let me label this. This is function 1 and this is function 2. Okay? I'm going to be uh, graphing these two functions in their respective regions. So I'm going to create a coordinate plane for you, coordinate system. Because my, uh, my y axis and there you have my x axis. All right, so first thing I like to identify is uh, the partition or the breaking line, the line where the function switches. So what you normally need to do is you need to take a look at the constraints that appear after the if. Sometimes it's, it's a comma separation, sometimes it's the word if. So in this case, it's if. So take a look at these numbers. They tell you the, the breaking line. So we have 1 right here. So that tells you that something happens to the left and to the right of 1. To the left of 1, you're going to have this function. To the right of 1, you have this function. So in essence, your partition uh, or your breaking line exists at x equals 1. So let's say this is x equals 1 right here. So what I'll do is I'm going to draw a partition or a breaking line just to help me visually see where I'm going to be uh, breaking my function in. Okay? So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place function number one, this function, in this uh, half plane right here. Function one goes here. It may not cross this boundary. And then function two goes in this half plane right here. Okay? So when I'm graphing this function, it cannot go to the left of this boundary. This is like a borderline, and each function has to stay in their respective borders, right? So let's go ahead and start with our function number one. Function number one is uh, 2 third, uh, let me write the whole function, f of x equals 2 third, f of x equals 2 third x plus 1. So if I want to graph this, this is just a line, right? I know that the slope m equals 2 over 3. What does that mean? That means you're going to rise 2 and run 3, and then your y-intercept where you starting from is 1. Okay? So let's go ahead and graph the points for uh, function 1. So starting from 1 on your y-axis, that's your y-intercept, you're going to rise 2, 1, 2, and run 1, 2, 3. Okay? Or I can fall 2, 1, 2, and go back 1, 2, 3. More points. Drop 1, 2, go back 1, 2, 3. Okay? Remember, you may not go to the right of this boundary. You just restrict yourself to uh, have uh, plane 1. Okay? All right, or region 1. So let's go ahead and draw a line using these points to guide us. See how the line goes to the left side of the boundary? And we have to extend this line to touch the boundary, okay? All right, now there you have it. Now the question is, does this line, does this graph I just drew, does it include the boundary or not? We need to look at this inequality, have less than or equal to, since it's less than or equal to, that means it includes the boundary point. This line under there, for the less than is an inclusion, so we have to have a solid dot where this line meets the boundary. Okay? And if you take a look at the second one, there isn't any line under the inequality, so this is going to be an open circle, meaning that this line does not include the boundary. Alright? So this is graph number one. This line right here is 2 third x plus 1. Uh, now let's graph the second one, f of x equals negative x plus 2. In this case, the slope is negative 1 over 1, which means you're going to rise negative 1, which is a full 1 unit, and you're going to run 1. 
okay? The aligner simply starts at 2. So let's go ahead and graph those. So starting from 2 on the y-axis, 1, 2, and then write that as the y-intercept. I'm going to fall 1 and go over 1. Right here, fall 1, go over 1. Fall 1, go over 1. The more points you have, the better it is. Fall 1, go over 1. Fall 1, go over 1. So all these points I'm drawing right here, they define the second function. So remember, your second function has to be in half uh, it has to be in half plane 2, or this half plane right here, this entire region. You can't go to the left of this borderline or this breaking line, okay? So let's go ahead and draw the line, taking that constraint uh, into consideration. So we're going to draw a line from here to the dot dot. There you have it. Now I'm going to shift the line a little bit away from the, into, from the boundary point. So the question is, when the line hits the boundary, is it a closed or open circle? If there isn't any line under the inequality sign, that automatically means that it does not include the boundary point, so we're going to have an open circle somewhere here. Okay? So, um, there goes your piecewise, the graph of your um, piecewise defined, defined function. Okay? Alright. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to use a TI-83 graphing calculator to to generate this graph, okay? So before I do that, let me just erase this uh, circle I have here so you can really see the graph I'm trying to draw. Okay, so uh, so if you have a TI-83, you can bring it out. This graph looks much nicer with a TI-84 on graphing calculator. So what we're going to do, you go, let me clear this function out. You go to your Y menu, this is where you're going to enter the function. So the syntax is as follows. You're going to enter the function in parentheses and then the, the constraints uh, in parentheses also. So let's enter to third X with parentheses. 2 divided by 3, X plus 1. And then you close that parentheses. Now in the next parentheses, I'm going to enter this constraint X as less than or equal to 1. So I'm going to enter X and then I need an inequality, so I'm going to go to map. Actually, I need to I need to go back to y. If I, I need to go to test. Okay, so second function map we take into test, and I need to pick the accurate inequality, which is less than or equal to. That corresponds to option six. So either you scroll down to six or just hit six and enter. So I press enter. So I have x less than or equal to one. Close that. Enter. So I just entered my first graph. Uh, let's graph it just to, just, for, just to show you how it looks like. So hit graph. Yeah, okay. One funny thing about this older calculator is, is when it gets to the break, the partition or where the break happens, it draws a vertical line. So you just ignore that. If you just remember that the line goes up and when it hits there, it stops. Ignore this vertical component, all right? Now, um, let's insert the second piece. Go to Y2. Parenthesis negative. Please do not use a minus. Use negative. Or this is a sign. This is an operation. So negative x plus two. Close that. So you remember the syntax. You enter the function, and then you enter the constraints after that. Parenthesis uh, x. Now I want to enter the inequality greater than. So I'll use second function map. Greater than is option 3. Press enter, greater than 1. And then I'll close it. Okay, so let's look at it again. Negative x is 2. x greater than 1, perfect. Alright, so let's go ahead and graph it. Yeah, you see how it looks like? So there you have it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in a little bit uh, further into this window so that you can really see what the graph looks like. We can use a zoom in, or I'd rather use a zoom box to really draw a box around this area to really see what's going on in this area where the function jumps from function 1 to function 2. Alright, so you just press the zoom button. Scroll down to, actually zoom box is option 1. You have a whole bunch of different zoom options here that you can use for different um, scenarios. So zoom box, press enter. You need the left upper left corner, so scroll to the left and then up. See how that cursor is? That cursor is telling me where I'm going to, where my, the position of my 
uh, upper left corner will be, or the, uh, yeah, or the upper left vertex of my box. So press enter, so that has it selected, so scroll right. So you should, should determine the width of your uh, box, zoom box, and then scroll down to determine the, the depth or the height of it. I think that's sufficient, right? We want to focus in on what's going on in this area so we can see if our answer is correct or wrong. So when you select the second, the lower right um, vertex of your zoom box, press enter. There you have it. Okay, so you can see that our answer is correct. Please ignore this line. If you you're using a TI-84, you're not gonna you're not going to see this line. Okay, this is like an antiquated programming algorithm. So you see that this line right here corresponds to this line going up, and you see as it hits one, it jumps to this other line right here, and you have it going down. So you can always use a graphing calculator to check the accuracy um, of your piecewise defined function. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. Uh, please subscribe to my channels for updates on cool clips such as this and more. You can share uh, with your friends the contents of this video via Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. More videos can be found on my Thanks again and have a wonderful day.